Welcome back everybody to the Kirby's Epic Yarn Playthrough. This is part six. And as we progress through Hotland, we're gonna cool things down a little bit in this next level, the Cool Cave. Now this level actually introduces a mechanic that was introduced, did I just say introduced twice? Uh, reintroduces a mechanic that was introduced in the previous stage. Um, also, I'm extremely disappointed that those drops of water don't do anything. Uh, and that being this, where Kirby turns into Thread. I don't think I mentioned it during the previous uh, level. But um, it actually has a little bit more functionality in this level rather than the previous one. Also, those bats are a, a special uh, yarn ball. When you roll them up, uh, when you throw them, they split into three. Which is actually very cool. Reminds me of when I was playing uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and all the memes that came along with that game. Um, and I think my favorite weapon in that was like the crossbow or something, and it had like that spread shot. Oh, hello. This is uh, this also has a spread shot, but uh, it's it's bat related. It's <laughs> bats and video games related. Now this this level I actually well first of all it's actually incredibly simple. <laughs> um, I am giving it way more credit uh, of being difficult than it really is. Um, but also, I think I, because of that, I took my time a little bit in this stage. There's our first coffee table crystal, our first uh, treasure of the level. I would like to grab those rainbow beads, but they do not appear accessible just yet. Now, the thing that I didn't realize about the thread um, form, I guess? is that you can actually move around in it, and that becomes... Oh no! That was incredibly rude. Uh, that becomes a little bit more important later on. Uh, oh, wow, that was lucky. <laughs> or was it? Because it made me miss. Uh, no? Okay, I got hit again. Nice. Um, where in the previous level it didn't matter at all. It was just, you know, those were just kind of like one-way thingies that were... What in the world am I doing? <laughs> one way, a uh, little one re one way streets, kind of like this. This little, uh, this little secret pathway to that uh, circle of rainbow beads. Um, but yeah, in this particular level, there are some forks in the road, kind of branch off, and you need to, well, go the correct way in order to progress. <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah, here it comes. This is this is gonna be one of them. Or it kind of leads me this way, but then I was like, well, wait a minute, how do I, how do I get back there? What happened? You just gotta, yeah, see, you can just kind of, yeah, oh, yep, yeah, there we go, kind of wiggle, wiggle, and kind of, oops, uh oh, okay, apparently I you can hit your head <laughs> in this form. <laughs> just kind of, yeah, okay, whoops, oh dear, okay, yep, yeah. and we're going on through. Yeah, this is this is incredibly wacky. I I, I kind of like it, but at the same time, it's. I don't know. I I, I find uh, I find it a little bit more exciting when I can jump around and, and run around and turn into a car. Oh, what in the world? Okay, there was like little. I I don't think I remembered that there were like little things that chase you through those uh, little thready caverns. Oops. Okay, got the three uh, bonus. And then I don't know if you can dispatch these guys, but I don't think I took the chance and tried. So I figured, yeah, I might as well just go around them, you know, they're they're moving in a very set path, I'll just let them do what they want to do, and I will move on, and, you know, I'll, I'll do me, and they'll do, the, they'll do them. Now this part's a little bit, a little interesting, um, where we had these, yeah, these sort of thread uh, spools that were being pulled up to bring the uh, floor up, or, you know, the ceiling down, uh, we kind of need to do that in order to, oh no! In order to, yeah, make that guy not do that. And then hopefully I can get my beads back. There we go. <sighs> you know me, I love collecting stuff, and man, I gotta say that... Oh, dear. That's... Yeah, that's... Less than superb. Um, I gotta say that I don't like losing <laughs> stuff that I collect. I gotta, gotta... Oh, no! Oh, wow! Okay. That was... I... Wow, the closest of saves. All right, and for that we get the Cool Cave CD. Fabric disc. Yes. <laughs> I, know, I know I said I was going to call it that. Oh, okay. Hello. Apparently they just explode when 
you get hit by them. So, I mean, that I guess that kind of is good, because, you know, you don't have to worry about getting hit by them again. We've got our little spread shot bat here. Let's see if I can... Oh, oh, and they home! Oh, pfft, wow! Okay, that's even better. They home in on enemies. Uh-huh. Oh, can we... No. Can we get in there? Yeah. Eh? Okay. So, that's what's supposed to happen whenever you, you know, fall off the level. Um, or, you know, fall in lava or anything that would have, you know, taken a life off in, in a normal Kirby game. But in this game, you just kind of get... You, kind of just drop a whole bunch of beads and then you get pulled to safety. Which, again, I don't like losing stuff that I collect. I, ooh, I am a very much not a fan of that. I can just kind of rush through here and just kind of yeah, get that really quick and then we'll be on our way. Getting a, whoa, my goodness. <laughs> Getting a little closer to that gold medal. Um, God, speaking of gold medal, and this is, you know, the uh, Topical. It might not be when people people watch this video further down the line in the future, but hey, the Olympics are going on right now, and uh, you know I've, I've been kind of sort of following that. I don't, I can't watch it because um, I don't really have like cable or anything, and I don't think I have uh, any way to actually watch it on whatever channel it's being broadcast on. But uh, I have been following at least the medal scores, and you know USA is doing. Quite good. I think they're in the league right now. And gold medals. And all medals overall, which usually is the case. USA usually ends up with the most medals, like, total. Um, this is a little spooky. But it is very slow. Because it's slow, I'm going to go ahead and tab out to the information. And I'm going to read... Um... The information. Um, oh yeah, that's right. And I was talking about how, yeah, you uh, Kirby doesn't have health or extra lives and cannot die in levels, but he will lose some of his beads upon re receiving damage falling into bottomless pits. Right, I just went over that. Uh, and then we talked about the beads being purchasable with furniture, or <laughs> beads being used to purchase furniture and wallpaper, which we just unlocked very recently. Um, right, and, and then Yes, decorating other apartments with the right furniture, new tenants will move in. Levels are completed by reaching and ringing the bell at the end of each stage. Completing a level gives the player a patch, which is thrown in the map area in order to unlock the next stage. Beating a boss level with the gold rank earns the player a hidden patch, allowing them to unlock additional levels at the end of a world. Oh. I was about to say, wait, what transformation is this? And then I went, oh. It's this. Again. This is, a, a, by far, my least favorite transformation so far. I don't know, I'm just not a fan of uh, all this. Um, and because of this, I'm going to be doing a lot of diggy digging, so I might as well do some more reedy reading. Um, as far as the visuals go, in the visuals uh, section here, uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn features graphics rendered in a unique knitted design based on animated yarn in a world of cloth and textiles. The game works its visual style into the gameplay by creating interaction between the game and its graphical style, such as allowing Kirby to pull on buttons, stray threads and zips, and spin balls of yarn to reveal hidden areas or alter the shape of the terrain. Hey, we just did a bunch of that in this stage. I think yeah, I, the reason why I wanted to tab out and read some more is because I'm pretty sure I, like, I dug a lot in this particular area. I think I wanted to make sure I missed absolutely nothing. Oh, goodness me. That See, that's that's part of the reason why I don't like this power-up, is because I, I, like, I feel like I have to dig every single piece of fluff. Because what if I miss something? I'm very obsessive that way. <laughs> very obsessive and compulsive. It's almost like I have a disorder. Um... Yeah, I think this is still gonna take a while. Um... Beady, beady, beady. Uh, so there's a little bit of a, a spoiler uh, for the further uh, uh, plot in, in this game. Uh, so I'm not going to read too much of the plot area here. But the beginning says, while walking through Dreamland, Kirby, dis D Kirby discovers a tomato on a bush and decides to eat it. Yin Yarn, the evil sorcerer who held the tomato, revealed to be a metamato, 
appears when he tries to inhale the meta Mato into his stomach and magically banishes Kirby into Patchland, a world completely made of fabric via the sock carried around his neck. In Patchland, Kirby's body transforms into yarn, rend rendering both his power to inhale and the ability to fly useless. Instead, Kirby is granted the ability to transform by the magic of the meta Mato, which he uses to rescue a yarn boy who looks similar to Kirby from being attacked by a monster. The boy named Prince Fluff explained that it explains that Yin Yarn has separated Patch Lane into pieces, which was tied together by magic yarn. When they come across the first piece after defeating a monster that attacks the duo, Kirby decides to help Prince Fluff collect all seven pieces of the magic yarn and restore Patch Lane. Hey, there's that bell thing that I just was re reading about in this uh, information. All right, so uh, a pretty yeah, pretty hefty sum of beads there. Did quite well. And we got uh, whatever that is. Flame patch? I don't know, some sort of fiery patch. Which I guess fits for Hotland. So now we're up to a total of... What is that going to be? 23,422? Ah, a torch. Okay, it's literally just a, a flame. Okay, we got more Zeke hide and seek. And of course, you know I am going to do that. Because I gotta. I like the Zeke and the hide and seek. -ing. Okay, so this flame just kind of creates a little campfire and cooks that <laughs> that very cartoon-looking, you know, slab of meat. And uh, this that, that looks like a brontosaurus, which is interesting. I thought they were leaf eaters. Regardless, this one ate the meat and exposed to us the next stage, Dino Jungle. Now I think. Oh, I do just go straight into the next uh, stage. Okay, that's cool. I thought maybe I, I ran back and did Zeke's thing, but yeah. Um, so yeah, as, as you probably could tell there, uh, very, very, very fast transition. Um, again, whenever I can, I'm just going to go ahead and cut out the uh, you know the curtain uh, loading portion. Also, it's been a hot minute since I uh, recorded this, so I do not remember how many times I did this level. I want it. I want to say this was the first attempt. I'm like 90% sure it's, it, this is my, my first attempt. I, I think I did it first try. Which, you know, should indicate that this is not a particularly difficult stage. <laughs> uh, if not, it, maybe it was like my second attempt. I don't know. Like I said, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, this, this is actually a really fun stage. I like this one. It's got very funky, upbeat, um, happy music. Joyful, joyful music. Uh, oh, and also, this is the, one of the stages that we do, uh, Hide and Seek, I just remembered. Oh, that one also splits, okay. Interesting. That one, but that one, the button, those are button bees, I think. Those guys split into, uh, three, uh, uh, pointed, um, projectiles, rather than the homing projectiles, like the bats. Oh, okay, and then they just started homing in. Alright. <laughs> it's like the game really, really wanted me to call, call me a liar. Um... Appear to be having a smidgen of trouble. Oh, that's not good. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm actually. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess this was my first try. I, honestly, I feel like in any other run, I probably would have just like restarted and said no. Tech with that. No. I, I I soldiered on. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Like I said, maybe this actually is my first try. That was quite annoying though with all those button bees. Yep, and there's more of them. <laughs> it's like a... Oh my goodness. It's like a baby mode Toho level. <laughs> eh? Easy mode, though? Okay, and then we get a torch... Uh, uh, what is it? Furniture? Accessory? Oh gosh, I can't remember the name. Ooh! Oh, the word. Ooh! Oh, this is... This is crazy. Button bees all over the place. Okay, there we go. This was a little strange. I thought maybe there was like something down there, but I guess maybe if you fall off and you just kind of swim for it uh, over there, that gives you a way to just kind of go up without having to jump on one of the dinosaur's heads. These spinny things I found were actually <laughs> very difficult for me to figure out. Um, I just I just couldn't get the timing of it. Oh, that's that angry pterodactyl. Hello, that guy just rolled into a ball? Is what, happened? what just happened? <laughs> am, I, am I crazy or did that just happen? 
I think it did. But yeah, getting hit a bunch was not cool. Um, oh, it's the, oh the snail guy. Yeah, that's right. And then he he acts like a, a big tire, like a rolling tire, to sort of run you over. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's let's uh, drop down to the development. Why not? As we kind of go down here, I think. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Oh, never mind. I I thought this was a level I was thinking of, but no, maybe it wasn't. Yeah, no, I don't think it is. Um, actually, wait a minute. Hang on. Let me. I forgot to open my uh, for not information. My uh, little walkthrough that I was using. Epic yarn. And then we are at the Dino Jungle. Now, I don't think there's anything particularly... Yeah, there's there's nothing really new here in this level. It's just kind of more of the same enemies. Oh, okay. And then I just kind of get zapped by that waddle do. The th oh, that's that was the thing with the snail. Right. If you grab the snail, it, it like it acts like a bowling ball, and it just keeps going, rather than just like yeah, colliding with like the first enemy. Like it'll it'll hit everything that it ru runs over. I think. Yeah. There it goes. Uh huh. I remembered. I'm so smart. Sometimes. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Again, nothing really too. Yeah. It's very. Even says in the walkthrough, it's a very straightforward, uh, nice and easy stage. You know, just, you know, it's a kick back and enjoy type of stage. Uh, so as far as the development goes, before I forget again, uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn was developed by Good Feel and was the third game developed by them in conjunction with Nintendo following the releases of Wario Land Shake It and Look Sleeves lineup. I don't know what that is. Um... What? And Shake It was for... Oh, for the Wii. Okay. Well, was that after or before uh, Smooth Moves? Oh, this is... Oh, whoops. I was thinking... Oh. I thought I said Wario Where. <laughs> whoops. No, it's Wario Land. Silly me. I think this is actually the only difficult part of the stage, is these sort of T-Rex mouths and... Uh, Chomping closed, which even still, that's not particularly difficult in itself. Oh right, and then you got this part. You gotta follow this guy around, and he. Oh, that's right here. Cool. Any day now. This <laughs> oh, the Bronto slide. Oh, that's we need that right for the one of the uh, apartments, I think. <clears throat> Pretty sure. God, their eyes get like really spooky when they uh, when they chomp. Oh, look at me! I'm trying to time it. <laughs> there we go. Maybe I got it. No, I'm. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say way off, but that wasn't that far off. Yeah, I almost got it. Oh, that! Wow. Okay, that's incredibly fortunate. I didn't even realize I didn't have a gold medal, but now I do, thanks to the bonus beads at the end. Okay, well that worked out. I just barely got enough, which was 900 for the gold medal. <laughs> Yay! Alright, good times. Good times. Now we get the pepper patch. Oh, right, I remember this patch particularly. Because, since we finished the fourth level in the world, that means that we're going to unlock the boss. Or the master. So this volcano is apparently capable of eating. <laughs> and it erupts after eating that chili pepper. Which then unlocks... Oh, that's actually really cool looking. Yeah, it's sort of Aztec looking uh, drawing of a phoenix. Which is hot wings! What will happen with the hot wings battle? Will it be exciting? Thrilling? Dastardly? Find out in the next episode. See you all in part 7. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time.